Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ihqam SOS, the Ramadan special. Inshallah, your fast has been going well. You've been seeking the benefits and the rewards of this holy month. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. How are you and how's the fast been going? All fine, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, mashaAllah. You haven't invited me for iftar yet. Inshallah soon, inshallah. Inshallah soon. Sheikhna, um, a very, very important topic, which haven't we, it's, it's the vital, one of the most vital topics is how to establish the beginning of the month of Ramadan What are the criteria that is required for us to acknowledge And for us to establish that tomorrow is the first of Ramadan InshaAllah A'udhu billah as-sami' al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala wa ala muhammad the beginning of the lunar month um, is established in five ways, in five main ways, as the Mas'ala in the Sayyid's uh, Book of Prasala and Law. The first way to define the first month of Ramadan is that the one cites the crescent himself. Okay. He should have the knowledge of the citing of, let's say, the, the degree of um, the position of the crescent, mm -hmm. the thickness, and so forth. Okay. You must have the knowledge. He has to be qualified, you mean? To some extent, yes, you're right. Uh, should know the, um, the attributes of the crescent okay. before going and seeing the... So uh, he the should moon. be uh, have an intermediate level of the science behind moon sighting? In general, yes, in general. Because okay. Mu'mani in the past few centuries they used to go and uh, do, do the sighting and uh, see the, the hilal, the crescent themselves. Um, so if you can, if you're able, you have a, a sharp vision, you can see the hilal in that time, that's fine. So you can see it yourself and uh, be as a witness to others that I saw it, so you can start fasting. That's uh, the first option. The second option is that uh, a group of credible mu'mineen, uh, those who are trustees, individuals who can go and do the sighting for the hilal and confirm that they saw it with such attributes of the hilal. And um, of course, if we trust them, then we can take the words and begin the month of Ramadan uh, next day, for example. Now, the third option is that true righteous men, Adil, to Adil, to trusty, just people, would come and give the witness and shahada that we saw it. And um, these are the, uh, the attributes of the hilal, of the crescent. Okay, so they, they have to have seen it, not that they heard from someone tomorrow is Ramadan. No, they should have seen it, of course. Yeah, they, they should have, have seen they, it themselves. Exactly. Okay. Because the hadith says, Sum waftur okay. Make sure that you begin the month of Ramadan by seeing the hilal, the present, and you end the month, uh, and the next day is the Eid, by also seeing the hilal mm -hmm. of the Eid. So it must be seen by the individuals, yes. not, not just to be told and taken just uh, without any strong evidence and reasoning. So. Um, if there are two adil, two just people, they can actually uh, be witness that they saw the hilal, the present, that's fine. It can be taken as uh, evidence and hujjah for beginning the month of Ramadan next day. The fourth option is that 30 day passes from the month of Sha'ban. So you have 29, the 30th day of Sha'ban, then inevitably, the next day, which is the first day of Ramadan, is actually the first day. Mm -hmm. We don't have an Islamic calendar, 31 days. Yes, so there's no need to look for the moon or anything. Exactly, so you, you just know. complete the fasting of, or, as a mustahab, for example, the month of Sha'ban, the mm -hmm. end, 
the last day of Sha'ban, which is the 30th, for example, you complete that uh, month. And then next day, which is inevitably is the month of Ramadan. So you begin fasting the first day of Ramadan from the next day. You don't have to see the crescent or anything else. There's no way you can actually go and, I mean, uh, the, the month is finished. It's 30 mm -hmm. days. So, Shaykh, likewise, uh, at the end of Ramadan, when we have, um, when you are fasting your 30th fast of Ramadan, there's no need uh, to look for the moon to see if tomorrow is 8 or not. Exactly, because you've already fasted 30 days. And in the lunar and Arabic, uh, the Hijri calendar, we don't have 31 days of yes. the month. So when you complete 30 days of any month, uh, the next day the is first the first of that month. Ascent. So it's 30 days of Ramadan, Ramadan, and then you have the first day, which is the Shawwal, mm -hmm. the Eid al-Fatr. Okay. And the last one is when the Hakam al the Marja, issues a decree, issues a verdict that um, uh, there was sighting, they saw the moon, and that's it. Tomorrow is the first day of month of Ramadan, or first day of Shawwal, which is the Eid. Then we have to follow khalas, because we okay. trust that alim, we follow that alim. And if he says that tomorrow, if it's Eid or the month of Ramadan, we trust him and we follow his decree with this regard. Ahsan. Shaykhna, I was... Other schools of thought, they say that if one Muslim country sees it, then all other Muslim countries have to follow. Or if one Muslim country sees it, you can trust them, it's okay. Do we have something similar like this in the school of Ahlul Bayt? What we have is um, if the east side of the country, of, 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 the, of Islamic countries, sees the, the moon, the Hilal, then those who are in the west, they follow that, uh, the country. Let's okay. say if it was seen in Iran, then Iraq can follow it. If they haven't seen it in Iraq, for okay. example, they can follow Iran. So it, it actually goes, uh, begins from the east and goes towards the west, and not from the west towards the east. Okay. So if we see it in England here, in London, yes. They can't follow us in the Middle East, for example, mm -hmm. because it's the West from the West to the East. Okay. So it's vice versa. Mm -hmm. So they have to um, see it first in the Middle East, for example, and then we follow on and we follow, let's say, Iraq or Iran, and we begin our fast, for example, due to their sighting. Okay, cause, because they are more eastwards than we are. Exactly. We can accept that if they've seen the moon, exactly. we can start our fasting and as it's well more in visible, here London. Visible in, in Middle East more mm. than the Northern Europe because we yes. don't see it. Yes. Usually we don't see the moon uh, mm -hmm. on the first night uh, of the month. So we rely on the Middle East okay. uh, and, and the Eastern countries uh, of the Muslim world. Ascent, ascent, excellent. Sheikh, what happens when um, I'm living in a city? Um, and mashallah, we have a lot of technology, we have social media, we have TV channels such as Imam Hussein TV um, When a marja says it is, tomorrow is the first of Ramadan But he was the only marja that said that the other maraja haven't given a statement yet They haven't said anything What happens in that case? Well, if that marja uh, had those trustees, either he, he said he saw uh, the crescent himself, he did the sighting, or he sent trustees, uh, people to go and do the, do the sighting of the crescent of the moon. And they saw it, they came to him and they gave the shahada and witness that we saw it. This is the des description, the attributes, features of the crescent, and so forth. If that marja declares that tomorrow is the first day of the month of Ramadan, and others haven't seen it, then they have to follow, follow the marja who declared the month from Ramadan. Even if I don't do his taqlid? Yes, of course, because he actually, a person that we trust, and as, as I've said, there are different ways for the sighting. It's not only to do with, with the taqlid. Even if two people came to you and witnessed that tomorrow is the, is the first month of Ramadan and they saw it, mm -hmm. or a group of mu'mineen, they saw it, خلاص, you start uh, the fasting tomorrow. So if a trusty person or group of people saw it and the rest of the people they have to follow. follow okay. Suit. Exactly. So what you're saying is it doesn't if if one Hakim Shar'i gives the statement tomorrow is the first of Ramadan, your marja that you do taqlid of hasn't said anything yet, you have to accept that tomorrow is the first. Until your marja says something, 
And if your marja has a different uh, statement, then can you follow that statement? Or do you still have to go with the first um, you know, news that you heard that tomorrow is Ramadan? Well, unless the other marja contradicts and says, and says that we haven't seen the, uh, okay. the Hilal, the Crescent. And you do taqlid of that marja. Sent, we sent our, for example, um, uh, the trustees and they haven't, sent, they haven't seen anything. Let's yeah. say one in Iraq, one in Iran. The one in Iran saw it, the one in Iraq didn't see it. So they didn't see the Hilal in Iraq, for example. So it depends on uh, the situations per, for each uh, marja. Okay, I said. Sheikh, now, there are rumors, I don't know if it's true or not, but certain people try to predict when Ramadan is going to be, and they already have predicted for the next five years when the Ramadan is going, going to fall according to the Gregorian calendar. Can we actually rely on this? Is this acceptable? I've just mentioned a few minutes ago uh, the hadith which, which says, Sum ru'ya You have to see the crescent on the uh, last day of the month to make sure that it is, it is going to be uh, the first day of Ramadan or no. So you must see it. We don't rely on um, the astronomers or the calendars and so forth. We have to still um, go and sight the moon and either for the first day of Ramadan or the first day of the Eid. Mm -hmm. You have to see it yourself, or the trustees, as I've mentioned, or the marja sends people yes. to, to sight the moon. We cannot um, trust <coughs> um, the calendars, we cannot trust the astronomers, the telescope, for example, and so forth. We have to rely on uh, the sighting itself. Okay. And um, does the Sayyid, Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life, does he allow? That if he says it is not Ramadan tomorrow, but another marja, such as uh, Ayatollah Wahid Khurasani or Sayyid Sistani or any of these people, they say it is, can we adopt that fatwa? Can we say yes, it is it, or tomorrow? Or do we have to stay with our marja and stay with Sayyid Sadiq and, and wait till he says it is first of Ramadan? Well, for the past few years, we have witnessed this condition that uh, when one of the maraja um, declares that tomorrow is the first day of month Ramadan, the Sayyid would wait till um, the late night. And then he also declares that, yes, tomorrow is month of Ramadan. So uh, I think most of the year, past years, he was in line with the other Maraja. Who okay, so th there's, the there's some day. communication and dialogue exactly, amongst exactly, the Maraja. Exactly, have you exactly. seen it? What have you seen? This, that? I exactly. Okay, okay. So more, nine times out of ten, they are unanimous and they are, um, there's a consensus, a joint agreement that tomorrow is the first of Ramadan. It's very, very rare to have a marja that's, that disagrees with that. Exactly. As I've said, I mean, it all depends on those who go and sight the moon. Mm -hmm. you know, may maybe uh, my own people and trustees didn't see the moon, for example. Okay. And the others actually saw it. So, again, the hadith says, when you mm -hmm. see it, fast and then we, when you see for the Eid, break your fast and so forth. It all depends on, on, on seeing. It's not, it's not like the fatwa that the marja gives halal or haram, najis or tahir. Okay. It's different. That's to do with sighting. So if we trust that marja, other maraja or other groups and they saw it, we just follow them. Halas. Sheikhna, does the Sayyid mention anything about using technology to sight the moon? Are we allowed to use certain machinery and things like that to, to look at the moon or must we look at the naked eye? Again, the hadith I mentioned that the said sticks with this hadith that you have to see uh, the crescent for fasting and you have to break your fast for the Eid if you see the crescent, uh, the night of the Eid. Um, he doesn't accept um, any kind of technology that we can trust and follow to begin our fasting or to break our fasting for the Eid, you have to see it by the naked eyes. And um, so, no, no extra instruments or tools. Example: I'm not allowed to get a telescope or binoculars to try and find the moon, or um, some sort of machinery if there's clouds in the way to actually get past the obstacles to view the moon. We're not allowed to use this. You can actually use them for the calculations, but 
the end, the, the, the last decision has to be made by the naked eye. Okay. So you have to see it, and then uh, you Determine. can declare mm. that it is Eid or is it the first day of Ramadan and so forth. You can use them as to, calcul to make calculations, that's fine, just to support uh, your sightings. But as I've said, the last decision should be made by, by the uh, sighting uh, the moon with the naked eyes, nothing else. Thank you to all our guests for joining us. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you for joining us on Ihqam SOS. Inshallah, may we have unity amongst the Shia Ummah and also with all the other Muslim brothers on Ramadan, the beginning and the end, that we can celebrate Eid together, inshallah. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.